to another video and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to create this newspaper transition effect inside of After Effects. Now before I start with the tutorial you're going to need this newspaper project file so um, you can use your own newspaper if you just find one on Google or whatever and kind of just change it up but basically what I did is just went ahead and customized everything or most of it like this text here it's all editable so you can go into the text here and just change it to whatever you want and then all the effects still get applied onto that text so so yeah either download this one that I created or you can go ahead and create your own but yeah once you download that you should have a newspaper folder and instead of that you should have the footage so all the different like assets and everything and then the actual file itself what we're going to do is just drag in this newspaper dot AEP uh, After Effects project. So bringing this into your After Effects project that you've already created, it'll just open up as like a folder here. And inside this folder, you're gonna find the project file that is actually the newspaper. And it'll just be called newspaper. So if you open that up, you'll see it's just a blank newspaper with um, some text. <laughs> As you can see, all of the things that just say random text are the ones that you can customize and you can also see that down here in the layers. And then I have three different cutouts for where you can put your videos so um, you can transition from one of them to a different one. Um, you can go ahead and customize this as well if you want. You can change a few things. But yeah, once again, if you do want to use your own newspaper effect and kind of create your own style, then you're more than welcome to do so. So inside of my timeline here, I just have this one clip. And what we're going to do is bring on that newspaper composition and just line it up at the end of our footage here. Because what I want to do is transition out of this clip and then go into another one. So let's go ahead and copy our footage. So hitting control C to copy that. And then we can go into our newspaper template. And I'm just going to have it zoom out of this square up here. That will be image one. So just opening up this image one composition and pasting in this footage. And you want to just kind of scale it down or up depending on um, your footage. Somewhere around there looks good. And we're actually going to go to the very end of this like footage here and right click it and then go to time and freeze frame and then it'll create this little freeze frame. So we can just trim down the edge of this clip by using control Z and let's just drag this all the way to the start of this composition. So now it's just a freeze frame of our video so basically it's just like a picture and that's kind of the goal because obviously you're not gonna have a video playing in a newspaper um, you can do that if you want but I think it just kind of sells the effect more um, with the layer actually frozen like this so we can go and close out that image now you can see it loads up in our newspaper with all of the effects applied now I want this newspaper to transition into this clip right here so we're gonna kind of copy the same process so so copying this layer by hitting control C and then going back into our newspaper and I want it to go into this or like transition into this rectangle here. So opening up the image three and then pasting our layer into this one. And then instead of going to the end and freeze framing, we're just going to go to the start and then hit time and freeze frame. Then we can just go ahead and scale this down. Something like that looks good. And then we can just go ahead and go back into our newspaper. Now for this last little box right here, I'm just going to go into this image two and place a random clip of the car here. We're not actually going to be transitioning into this, but um, I'm just going to go ahead and time freeze frame just so we have a placeholder there, just so it doesn't look like we just have a black box with nothing in it. Once you have something in there, then it'll just kind of fill in that blank area. Now we can go ahead and change some of this text here if we want. Just select the text layer and then if you double click it, you can edit the text. I assume you guys probably already know how to do that, but if you don't, then that is how you edit this text. All right, so I went ahead and changed all of the text here. And as you can see, I literally just named it to random stuff like the car, adding like <laughs> super fast. Oh, I guess I forgot to change this one right here. But also there's this like super small text here that it's kind of hard to see, um, but you can go into the rough and edges right here and then decrease this border and it should show up a little bit more. It's like 0 0.8 and you can kind of see it a little bit. Um, but yeah, once you have everything, you can go ahead and save this. So hitting control S and then go back into your original composition. Now let's go ahead and enable a 3D for this layer. And on that newspaper layer, we're going to open up the rotation. So hitting R and then also the position. So hold down shift and hit P on your keyboard. And we're going to line up this first frame with the car here. So you can use these arrows and kind of drag the layer around to line up our first frame because we want to kind of zoom out from the car here. Something just like that is pretty good. So this is going to be our starting frame. So let's go ahead and set a keyframe for the position as well as 
the X, Y, and Z rotation. Now let's go a few frames over and set another keyframe, zooming out of our layer. So just by using the Z value here, that's how you zoom out. Let's move it down a bit, and then you can mess with the rotation here. Now let's go ahead and set another keyframe, kind of spaced out evenly over here. And we just want to kind of rotate the camera around to kind of show that you're revealing this next layer here. Now let's just go to the last frame of this clip and then set the rotation to zero for all of these values. And then just zoom into this clip because this is what we're going to be transitioning into something like that. So now when I play this back, you can see we now have our animation and it honestly looks pretty bad because you don't want to have these like linear keyframes where it just goes from one keyframe to the next and it's just an instant hard like turn just ruins the smooth animation that we're kind of going for as well as you can kind of see the newspaper kind of clips right here and you can see the background which you don't really want to see so to fix this what you can do is add um, motion tile so bringing motion tile onto this layer and then just bringing the output width to like 300 as well as the height to 300 and then just hitting mirror edges now when you look in that corner it just fills in the edges so yeah, you don't really see anything besides the newspaper now, which is good. So we can kind of create those animations without having any issues. And I also think this animation is just too quick in general. So what we can do is just expand our newspaper layer and just like kind of drag these keyframes out. So now what we want to do is select all of these, right click them and then go to keyframe assistant easy ease and for the position values we're going to right click this and hit separate dimensions so now we have all the different position values separated so starting with selecting the x position we're going to go into the graph editor and make sure you just have auto select graph type enabled and you can check that by right clicking your graph so what we want to do is just kind of ease in all these keyframes here smooth them out like this right here is literally what you don't want is a hard kind of cut into the next transition so you just want to smooth all of these out and it's definitely going to take some time just like playing around with them and seeing what looks good. And I must say, if you're using this flow plugin, it will be a lot easier to do this. Um, you could literally just select all of them and use that plugin. But I know not all of you guys have it, so I'm just going to use just the generic graph editor in After Effects, which honestly does a really good job. And you don't really need the plugin, but that plugin will save you a lot of time. As you can see, with just some basic graph editing, this already looks a lot smoother, but I'm not really happy with how this ending is kind of looking. I wanna have this kind of zoom into that last frame a bit faster and maybe zoom out of this first one faster. So we're gonna go back into the Z position and we're gonna have this kind of start super quick like this and ease out as well as the end. We're gonna have it just zoom in super quick. And my After Effects just crashed. All right, so my After Effects literally just crashed and I guess I didn't save the project throughout editing that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use the newspaper transition or animation that I created for the original like intro kind of animation. So yeah, I'm not gonna be able to use what I was just creating. Hopefully you can kind of see like what I was doing and kind of replicate what that style and animation looks like. But once you're happy with what you have, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. And honestly, if you want, you don't really have to add anything else. You could just use what we have right here. But what I'm gonna do is add a few more effects to kind of help polish and sell this effect even more. So I'm gonna create an adjustment layer by hitting Control alt y and just trim it down to this layer. The first thing I'm gonna do is add a bit of camera shake. So let's go into transform, bring that onto our new adjustment layer and hold down alt and open up the position. And this will just open up the expression here. Let's just go ahead and type in wiggle. And inside of these parentheses, I'm going to do two comma 20. And these might be different for you, but I think this just gives off a pretty subtle but clean camera shake. Now I'm going to apply CC wide time right here. Bring this onto our layer. Let's do the forward steps as three and backward steps as zero. And this actually might be a little bit too much. We could bring this down to like two, um, but this kind of creates like a little bit of a, a ghost trail or you could really have it up to like six if you want, create like a trippy kind of effect, I guess. But I like to actually be able to see some of the text and what's actually going on. So I think two works pretty well for this. Now, if you want that like stop motion effect, we can go ahead and apply posterize time and bring this onto here and using like eight or 12 is a pretty good value for this. So now you can see it creates that like stop motion effect and it honestly makes the keyframes look even smoother. I don't know how, but kind of just 
cleans up everything and honestly just makes this effect look even more realistic. Lastly, I'm just going to go ahead and apply a vignette just using the built in After Effects one and just cranking up the amount for that vignette. And then let's go ahead and lastly apply some grain. I'm just going to use this add grain here, change the preview to final output and change this preset to like one of these Kodak visions and then change this to like 0.8. You can see without all these effects applied, I mean, the difference is crazy. So yeah, I really recommend using these different effects to help bring everything together. And actually the last thing I'm gonna do is just add some film burn onto this to help smooth out these transitions. And I'm just gonna apply one more to the end transition. Um, I don't really like how it zooms in and then it's just like still, it kind of looks off. So to fix this, I'm actually gonna go into this layer and open up the scale by hitting S and then go to the end and just scale in on this layer. You want to make sure that you have motion blur enabled and then go into the keyframes and create a graph or look something like this. So it zooms into that layer. Also, what I just realized is I'm actually using the wrong clip for this last frame because originally in my first like edit, I had this one here, so it made sense, but I totally forgot. So just ignore that because I originally had this one in here. Uh, for this tutorial, but since that didn't save, um, yeah, but <laughs> you kind of get the point. It'll look a lot smoother if you actually have the right footage in there. Um, but yeah, there we go. That is pretty much how you create this effect. And if you guys enjoyed this kind of longer breakdown of a pretty in-depth tutorial, like this definitely isn't the easiest effect to do. Hopefully you learned a few different things as well. If you guys enjoyed this video, then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.